Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome back to each and everyone who has been uh, doing this course now for the past 6 weeks. This is the 6th week we have started, uh, module number 1 of uh, week 6 and this is the 31st lecture of this MOOC NPTEL course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran from the Department of Humanities of IIT Kanpur. I have been giving you this course for the past 6 weeks. Now, in the 6th week, I am completely going to focus on communication skills, which if you remember I said is a very integral part of soft skills and some people invariably think that communication skills actually mean soft skills. But I would rather consider communication skills as a very core area of soft skills because soft skills is going beyond what we normally consider as communication skills. And in this module, we will particularly focus on effective communication. Okay. So, normally you think about communication, but I want you to focus on effective communication. Now, before we start, like as I do all the time, let us see what I did in the last lecture and I will give a quick highlight. In the last lecture and the last week that was completely on technology and communication, I concluded the last lecture with a focus on the email etiquette. And I uh, suggested to you that it is very important to write sensible mails by eliminating bad writing habits. In order to do that, you need to plan what you should write well in advance, you need to note down the points, you need to make a draft, you should be clear, concise and coherent. And you should spend extra time on checking the spelling, grammatical mistakes and typographical errors. You can insert emoticons to give a kind of feeling, you can emote your words. You should also make use of punctuation marks, so that people understand uh, the idea clearly in terms of uh, separating them in sentences. Use a descriptive subject line, because subject line always reveals the kind of person that you are and never leave it empty to give no subject. Whenever you write an email, write only short and focused emails. And when you reply somebody, you respect the person to whom you are replying. Do not use the automated re, re, re in replies. You break the circuit by putting a new subject there. At the same time, when you reply, do not inadvertently press reply all and send to many people randomly and send CC to so many people. Use only well known and common abbreviations, if at all you are going to use abbreviations, but in a formal email I would rather say even avoid abbreviations. Last but not the least I said that keep an eye on the computer clock, because your clock indicates a time that is in the past and then you are asking for people to meet you or you are planning to invite people for some action that is going to happen in the future people get confused and then they are not able to actually make it to the event, the appointment. Now, starting with our new week, new lecture in this one, look at this. I said this entire module is going to be on effective communication. Why should we learn effective communication? Why cannot we be just communicator and not effective communicator? The basic principle about an effective communicator is that an effective communicator will emerge as a natural leader. This means, he who communicates will always lead and the person who effectively communicates will be a very popular and very powerful leader. Often you will find that people who are not that educated, but they are very effective in communication. So, they are able to lead people who are even very highly educated. Now, look at another aspect of communication that uh, is to do with human tendency, human nature. Generally, people prefer to be followers. Remember, I told you in the 
previous module where we talked about habits, I said that generally people are inherently lazy. So, what many people do, many people are comfortable if somebody can think clearly, speak on their behalf and communicate effectively for them. Okay. In fact, if somebody will think, speak and act on their behalf, they are very happy and often they go to that somebody who could be a relative, a friend, a neighbor, a teacher, a mediator, a lawyer, a mentor or a leader. Now, I call that somebody an effective communicator. Actually, people approach that somebody because that somebody is an effective communicator and an effective communicator is always in demand. Make yourself an effective communicator, that is the imperative goal that is the most important aspect of developing your soft skills and personality and keep that as a very main objective for you. Now, before we go to effective communication, what is the significance of communication as such? If you look at all successful people, whether it is a leader, whether it is a manager or a teacher or any professional, it depends on their ability to communicate. Communication failures, if you look at it, are very costly. Often communication failures lead to ill feeling among workers in companies. It can cause strikes and it can affect productivity. People will give their best only if the communicated message is clear to them. So, if you are at a higher level and if you are commanding some workers below you, there are subordinates, you have to convey effectively the message so that they are able to understand you and they are able to give their best only if you are able to do that. Now, think about this, it is a famous quotation from Robert Frost, it goes like this, of the world is filled with people who have something to say and cannot say it and the other of, of people who have nothing to say and keep on saying it. So, this means the world is divided into two people according to this poet Robert Frost that one group of people who have really some meaningful thing, something purposeful to communicate, but they do not know how to communicate it and the rest of the people, they have nothing to say, they have no ideas, but they keep on saying it because they know how to say it. Although they do not know what they are saying, what they are talking about, they do it. Now, there is another famous novelist who says something similar to this, it is Fyodor Dostoevsky, a very famous Russian uh, storyteller, novelist and consider the quotation from him, he says, much unhappiness has come into the world because of bewilderment and things left unsaid. So, in the previous quotation, the poet was referring to half of the people who have something to say, but they are not able to say it. And now, the very famous experienced master novelist says that much unhappiness actually comes to the world, comes to human beings because of confusion and things left unsaid, they are not able to say it. So, so many things are buried within the heart they are not able to articulate correctly, they are not able to convey it effectively. Now, this is a very interesting factor about communication because it implies your happiness depends on how effectively you are able to communicate. To put it in a simple manner, you will not have any stress, you will not have any worry, you will be very happy and successful if you are able to spell out if you are able to tell clearly whatever you feel in your heart, whatever your mind thinks, if you are able to express that coherently, clearly, effectively to people, you are completely free. Okay, your mind is free, your heart is free and it is not stressed. So, in fact, the novelist is trying to point out that we get unduly stressed because we are not able to communicate what we have within us. So, one aspect of happiness is your ability to communicate and communicate effectively and lay down all the burden, leave it to other people to respond to it. Now, look at communication from other perspective. 
all of us communicate. The world has shrunk into a global village as I was discussing when we talked about technology and communication and now you can connect at the touch of a button to anybody anywhere in the world. Communication has become so easy, it is like a breeze, anytime, anyhow, anywhere you can talk to anybody. But is it always effective? The answer is a big no, most of the times it is ineffective and then think about this, it is again from a famous novelist Mark Twain and he puts the emphasis between communication and effective communication. He says, the difference between the almost right word and the right word, the difference between the almost right word and the right word is really a large matter. So, people think that right word and a synonym. So, we can use a synonym if you do not know the right word, but he says that it is a large matter, it is a big difference he says. It is the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning. So, lightning bug is the small bug that emits light and most of us have played with the bug during our childhood. We take it, put it in a bottle and then in darkness uh, we uh, see the fun in the bug emitting light. But then lightning, you can see the power, you can see the effect and when you say lightning bug and lightning, it is huge difference and that is what Mark Twain says is between the almost right word and the right word. It is between a communicator and an effective communicator. So, that you should keep in your mind. Communication versus effective communication. Now, knowing the difference between these two, that is the almost right word and the right word amounts to being just a communicator and an effective communicator. Now, you might be asking me, sir, does it really matter? As long as I communicate with people, as long as I am able to say something to somebody and the person can actually uh, hear what I am saying. So, should I bother about this? Does it really matter? Now, instead of answering, I am going to show one example in which a guy wanted to create a good impression, but actually it resulted in the opposite due to lack of clarity in communication and it is between the right word and the almost right word. Now, look at this. This guy wanted to impress the girl and then uh, he wanted to come and tell her that he read something about chromosomes, about genes and then he wanted to share uh, to this to the girl and he wanted to impress her and he wanted her to uh, become his friend. So, he came running from the library and then he just told her, hey, do you know that your father's genes can give you diabetes? So, what he meant was the chromosome genes that can actually give diabetes due to hereditary. Now, the girl was wondering, she thought about the genes that one wears as a dress. So, she said, stupid. I do not wear my father's jeans, so how will I get diabetes? So, you can understand the communication gap. The guy actually wanted to impress the girl, showing that he is a very smart one, but it worked out in the opposite manner. She concluded that this guy is really stupid because he is thinking that if I wear my father's jeans, I will get diabetes. How stupid is this guy? So, this simple example will illustrate to you why it is important to be an effective communicator and not just a communicator of information or ideas. Communication you should understand is a very complex interactive process. Now, look at the picture that I have given here. It looks like it is a lab or school room, classroom scenario in which the teacher has asked the girl to describe about one flower. Now, as the girl is trying to describe this flower, look at how people understand it, how they try to understand. Maybe the teacher has asked her to explain it by gestures, 
not telling the exact word, not telling the exact name of the flower, but she is trying to use gestures, give clues. So, they have to find out the word, the name. So, if you look at it, people can think as remotely as something like a ship, something like octopus, something like a fish, cat, aeroplane, no way it is related to this. The only closest one is a guy who is smiling and sitting at the corner and assuming that it is a tree. Okay. So, other than that you find only animals and other things which have nothing to do with the flower. So, communication is a complex interactive process. So, when you interact it involves shared assumptions and unspoken agreement between individuals. We presume, we assume so many things and that assumptions and presumptions are to be checked. If you do not check and clarify, so then there will be errors and misunderstandings are quite possible and sometimes it will be very costly because like once you cause it, it is very difficult to reset it so easily. So, effective communication overall, why it is important and why should you have it? Effective communication is your ability to cause the intended and desired response. So, when you communicate, when you want something, you intend to get something back and you want a desired response from the other person and you should get it. If you are an effective communicator, you will get it. Effective communication indicates your ability to influence people. It is not just sharing ideas, but you are able to influence people their ideas and thought patterns, which means their thinking itself and those patterns which actually govern their actions. So, I am trying my best to use my communication skills to sort of influence your thinking, undo your learning and then help you to relearn new things, change your thought patterns and then try to govern your actions. But the effectiveness depends on how much you have absorbed it and how much you are able to change it. So, overall if you become an effective communicator, effective communication will give you sustained success in all walks of life because you are free, you are happy when you communicate and you get whatever you want and then ultimately success is all about getting what you want in life, peace, freedom, happiness and wherever you go, you will be able to get it. Now, come back to communication. The other aspect of communication, we communicate 24 into 7. So, we communicate non-stop because communication has become the basis of our lives. It surrounds us, protects us, changes us, reveals us, identifies us, makes us happy, makes us sad. We are permeated by all media of communication. So, today there is nowhere to hide. So, media will chase you wherever you are. And communication by simple definition, it is an exchange of ideas, thoughts and feelings between two or more entities, living beings, two or more human beings. I said entities because sometimes even you can communicate effectively with even what we think as animals and which do not speak to us, but then you can communicate verbally, non-verbally with your pet dog, with your pet cat. So, even dolphins for example, uh, interact with human beings. So, two or more entities, even people believe that uh, there are some uh, human beings who, you, who even communicate with plants and plants also try to communicate, they feel happy when the gardener or when the owner of the house goes and then pours water and then I have seen people talking to trees, okay, they communicate. So, communication basically is an exchange of ideas, but for our course when we are talking about communication, we are much concerned about human communication that is the interaction and exchange of ideas and thoughts between two human beings. We communicate our thoughts and feelings to family, friends, co-workers and even neighbors every hour of every day. But there is not a single minute where uh, we think of stopping communication, we 
do it all the time, but the question is do we communicate effectively and again the answer is almost 60 to 70 percent of the time we do not. Now, let us look at another example of ineffective communication, so that you understand why effective communication is important. Now, here is a person who is making an order to somebody in a restaurant and then he says hello, please deliver a spicy chicken. So, what he wanted was he was hungry and he wanted to have a spicy chicken. Now, it is a big restaurant they can uh, uh, give anything you want and then they are also dealers with so many other uh, items. So, by the time he waited for some time and then it was delivered, when it was delivered after the delivery he was so annoyed and then he had to call back the people and tell them what happened. What happened was instead of giving a spicy chicken, they gave a spiky uh, hen, spicy you know like for the taste ok, so much of uh, chilies and other masala items are put. Spiky, so it is indicating spike like thing on the head of the uh, hen or cock. Okay. So, he completely was bewildered, disturbed, when he saw that in the delivery they have given a live one and when he was hungry and he was asking for a spicy chicken. Now, if you go back to our uh, telephone communication, you know how to sort it out very easily. If you are effective listeners, one of you would have actually asked, the receiver would have actually asked, you want spicy or spiky, could you clear it? Okay. And then the other person at this end could have actually even spelt it, he could have said S P I C Y, spicy, I want to eat it, I want to cook the one. So, it would have made it clear, but as I said why did not he do that, because we always go with presumed assumptions, we go with lot of assumptions and then we take communication for granted. So, effect of ineffective communication, misunderstanding and it did not convey the intended message here. Now, look at this quotation from another famous dramatist uh, George Bernard Shaw. He says that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. As it happened in the previous uh, example that I gave, the person who ordered for the spicy chicken was in the illusion that he has communicated effectively. Okay. And most of the times even like teachers when they teach, they are with the illusion that everything has been taught. It is only when the students start giving feedback they realize how much has been received effectively. So, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Now, before we go to understanding how you can become effective communicator, understand the basic components of communication. Communication is a two way process, one person that is the sender is the one who is first important person, he or she transmits the message to the other person who receives it. Minimum you need two people for the communication loop to be completed. The transmission is done through a channel, the language or code used to convey the message is called medium, the receiver sends back a response, the observation of the receiver's response is called feedback. Now, the channel for example, uh, can be PowerPoint, I am using a video. So, the, the mode in which it is conveyed to you, the medium can be verbal language, can be pictures and then the way you respond. So, either by nodding your head, smiling or asking questions or appearing in uh, exams. So, they all show that you are uh, giving a response and then the observation of the receiver's response is called feedback. Now, look at the communication process basic model, it is the first one the sender has idea and then the sender encodes idea in message and then the message travels over channel and then the receiver decodes the message and after decoding the receiver sends feedback 
and it travels to the sender. Now, the sender once he receives properly the communication loop is complete, the sender may send possible additional feedback to receiver. So, this is the basic model of uh, communication, but you can uh, also understand the communication process in the expanded model where two three items are added one is the stimulus part okay there is an external motivation or an internal thinking that is stimulating this person and then the encoding and decoding involves an understanding and then the person is using a channel and sending it and then there is again decoding understanding encoding but in between there are also barriers in the expanded one so, in the coming lectures we will be looking at the barriers, but right now you understand that in the expanded model barriers are added and stimulus is another thing that is added and understanding is also added. A simple way to remember this communication process if you ask 5 WH questions, who sends is the sender, whom does he send is the receiver, what does he send is the message, which medium that is channel or how does he send that is uh, channel, what effect is he sending that is response or feedback. If you ask the question in a simple manner who sends what to whom through which channel with what effect that is the communication process. But if you care at each and every point of communication you will become an effective communicator. Now, effective communication occurs only when the message and its subtext are fully and completely acknowledged and responded to. To be an effective communicator obviously, you have to be a very active listener, you have to be a whole body listener, you have to watch the subtext, the inner nuances, the subtleties, the, the communication that is said and the idea that is remaining unsaid, you should be able to grasp what is told to you and what is not told to you. Often uh, a lady says no, but actually she might be feeling that if you press it little more I would say yes. Okay. So, that grasping the part in which the other person is retaining some part the subtext saying one thing, but actually indicating something else. So, acknowledging that responding that will make you an effective communicator. Feedback could be in the form of an acknowledgement an action or verbal reply, but looking at this part is the deciding factor in any communications effectiveness. Looking at the subtext, looking at the whole body involvement in communication, not missing any aspect of communication whether it is verbal or non-verbal. Now, what components you should keep in mind if you want to become an effective communicator? This perhaps is the most important part of this lecture and pay more attention to this. There are 5 components I am going to describe basically. The first one is conciseness and clarity which means be concise do not use more words and be clear okay, that is you should be simple and you should be clear. Example, do not say that homo sapien earned for dihydrogen oxide when you can just say that man wanted water. Second point, second component, second element of effective communication is conviction and confidence. Before I explain look at the quote from Robert Frost he says that no tears in the writer no tears in the reader. What he means by this is that when a writer writes a poem if the writer cannot actually feel moved with the poem if the writer cannot actually cry at the end of the poem then she cannot expect the reader to cry after reading her poem. Some good directors, good actors whenever they watch their show the performance their movie they are moved to tears and then they are their first audience. So, conviction and confidence if you have the conviction 
if you have the involvement okay, and automatically you will be able to convey that with confidence. It is your passionate involvement and the way you put it will convince your audience. If you are not involved, you cannot make your audience involved and it is important to make your audience involved in effective communication. So, you should all take all pains to make it effective. The third component is showing genuineness and interest that is showing enthusiasm. So, be genuinely interested in the subject matter to cause enthusiastic response from your receiver. If you know that the subject is really interesting to you, only then you will be able to cause enthusiasm in your readers. But if you yourself is not convinced that the subject is interesting enough, you will be really boring your audience to death. So, the next component you should keep in mind is empathy and timing sense. Empathy already you know is feeling into the other person that is respecting your audience and giving respect to their time, the utility of time whenever you are in a communication. Remember even in email I said respect their time. So, any communication I will keep telling you that respect the time of the audience, try to minimize. So, treat the audience with courtesy and politeness, be sensitive to the utility of their time, make listening to you a worthwhile experience. Whenever you are in communication, they should get a feeling that, oh I listen to this person and this splendid ideas, wonderful ideas said to me in a very effective manner, I can remember it. I would like to listen to this person again. It should be a worthwhile experience. People should not regret why they came in contact with you, why they came to communicate with you. The last but not the least component of effective communication is being brief that is brevity and effectiveness. They go hand in hand. Brevity is the soul of wit according to Shakespeare. What he meant is being brief is really indicating your ability to be intelligent. So, you should be as brief as possible that is you should make it short, okay, keep it short your communication. If you want to heighten effectiveness in your communication, even if you remember in the email I told you that if you make a lengthy email, nobody will be interested in reading, you have to make it short and effective. So, brevity is about that being brief and then effective. I already started telling you about types of communication without overtly specifying that. By this time you have understood that basically we have two types of communication, the verbal that involves the spoken word, the structured language form between two or more entities, dialogues, meetings, debates, presentations, they are all in the verbal form. I am using a verbal form of communication now, but I am also using a non-verbal form. So, that is body language, gestures, facial expressions, pictorial representations, I am using PPT, pictures, sign language, sometimes even I am using my hand to indicate something to you. Communication is more than mere words, if you understand that it is not just verbal. To understand a message completely, we have to not only understand what is being said, but also how is being said. Okay, the tone, the intonation, the implication, so those things will matter. You should not think that verbal communication is more important than non-verbal or the vice versa. Effective communication is a seamless blend of both verbal and non-verbal aspects of communication. It is a very appropriate blend, it is a perfect mix so, and you should be able to do both, not only master one. Now, before I conclude, let me ask you some questions which will also explain to you through the examples whether they are effective communication or not. Suppose you write something like this without any punctuation marks, is this effective communication? Woman without her man is nothing. Obviously, no because it is becoming very ambiguous. Depending on the places where you put comma, 
the meaning can actually change. Look at this, if you put the comma after woman, woman without her man is nothing. So, this means any woman without her man, father, brother, husband, son, neighbor, colleague, boss. So, without her man it says is nothing, it completely gives a male centered view. But if you change the comma, put it in a different place that is with after without her, the meaning completely changes and becomes the opposite. Woman without her, man is nothing. So, this means any woman whether it is mother or sister or wife or friend again boss. Now, without her man is nothing. Okay. You see how the meaning changes depending on the use of uh, punctuation marks and then you need to be effective in communication depending on what is your intended meaning and what is the effect you want to create. Look at the other example. Again, if you write like this, kill him not leave him, is this effective communication? No, because again it can mean two things and it happened in the uh, life of a minister who was uh, very good and then the co-ministers felt jealous of him and then poisoned the mind of the king and they uh, gave negative impression about this person and uh, the king actually thought that he will kill this fellow finally because of this uh, ministers, but he did not want that to happen before his eyes. He sent him to the nearby king and then he sent a message okay, through a soldier and then the king looked at the message and then he read the message like this, okay. but actually by the time the king sent the message. he sent another person and then again he was not using any punctuation mark, but he meant something else. He came to know that actually the minister is true and then loyal and then he wanted him to be spared, but the king read this meaning he thought kill him not leave him. So, he himself took this word and cut off the head of this person, but what the king actually wanted at a later stage was this meaning, he wanted the other king not to kill him and leave him free. Okay. Kill him not leave him was the request, but it was understood as the other way around. So, you can understand how ineffective communication can cause grievance, can lead to the level of making a person lose his precious life, can cause strife and then unnecessary burden on people who are involved in ineffective communication failure. Okay. So, avoid this and then use the components which I discussed about effective communication. We will look at more aspects of communication in the uh, coming lectures, but before I conclude I just want you to take a look at this quotation from Tony Robbins. It says the way we communicate with others and with ourselves, the way we communicate with others that is interpersonal communication and with ourselves that is intrapersonal within us ultimately determines the quality of our lives. So, it is the effectiveness in which you communicate will heighten the quality of your life. So, I wish that you increase this effective level in your communication and strive to increase the quality of your life also. So, wish you all success and then I am very happy that you have been watching this video. Thank you so much and have a nice day.